It's uh, developed around research and getting good information out there so that citizens and leaders can take action to make their community a little bit better. We've looked at 12 sectors of the community, even though they're all connected to each other as determinants of health. We looked at things like the housing and environment and transportation and, and health and recreation and culture and to see how we're doing in each of those areas. We did the report in 2008 and the 2011 is to see, are we doing any better? and to look at statistics and good information to see compared to ourselves, are we moving in the right direction? And also compared to the province or other communities like us or across Canada, how are we doing in, in birth weights? How are we doing in different parts of the environment or recycling? So I was very excited about getting information. It's not about the numbers, it's about how that makes for life for people who work and live and play in Niagara. So we're going to present that to you. Now we did also do something else be besides a research approach to synthesize the information and to analyze it and to prepare that for people. We also included people to rate our community in those areas. We identified about 36 what we call expert opinion leaders, people who work in their various fields so they know about the crime rate and they know about creating a safe and, and, and healthy Niagara and they know things about the uh, uh, sense of belonging and, and how we are including new immigrants and, um, and uh, uh, ambulance times and response times. And we went to those leaders and we said uh, three for each sector. How are we doing? Take a look at the report and where we say we're at in those indicators that were outlined and tell us how you see us rating. And those leaders we included in a variety of ways. First, when we went to them at the beginning, we said, look, do you have some reports? Do you have some research to contribute to it? And they generously shared and made sure that that was all available to the council in that area. Then we asked them to measure how we're doing and how we're rating. We had a rating scale, a lot like the one we used in the Living in Niagara report in 2008. It had five levels. And in the first level, what we had was, um, and we would say that it's an area in need of, con uh, of corrective action. It's pretty critical, we're not doing too well, we really better be doing something better about this. Something like poverty, that we need to be doing more about that. Level two, it's of concern, needs attention. That there's enough in the information to say that we better get some action on this to make our community better. Level three, progress is being made. Made. Now compared to the last report, we divided that in two areas. That we wanted people to rate whether they think a little progress being made or a lot of progress is being made. Level four, we're doing well. We're headed in the right direction. The good news is we're beginning to do that as we begin to care about and bring people together. We know how we can work together to make some improvements. Level five, we're doing great. Niagara is a leader. We hope to ring the bell on that in a lot of er other areas in the future. Now the second method of rating how we're doing in this report was that Karen Cudmore, who is a student at Brock University and a researcher who works along with me, she was doing a study and has completed a study called Social Capital and Health Survey. She did a stratified random sample of citizens in Niagara, so it's a really good research project with large numbers all across Niagara. and asked some questions about how they would rate their health and what their health issues were and also about things about what's called social capital. It's about trust, trust of your elected officials and educators and police officers and uh, other parts are, and your neighbors and how much you feel you can be engaged in your community and participate in the community and connect with others to solve problems together. Now, she did that through a quantitative telephone survey and the full results of that report is going to be available early in 2012. However, she did do something for the council. She added a subsection with questions, a couple questions for each of our, uh, of our sectors and areas that we're looking at. And she was generous enough to prepare the results of that and that will be uh, available with the online report for the Living in Niagara report. And you'll see what the citizens have said along with the expert opinion leaders. Now the last method we're going to use is a really exciting one. It's kind of like the written report will be out, the one on the uh, website will be out and online with the Niagara Research and Planning Council, but we're going to ask citizens to read parts of it, to find the areas that they have concern about, concerns about, passion for, 
and we're going to ask the citizens of Niagara also to weigh in and also to rate their community from their experience of how they live here, how they see the environment or bicycle trails, how they see opportunities to engage in leadership and taking action. The Really, the Niagara Research and Planning Council uh, used these three ways of measuring in order to get the community together with the research and the next stage is to see if we'll take action on those areas. We have our ratings, now we want to improve them.